Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer micro game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Spirits of Carter Mansion. It is an 18 card card game in which you're going to be playing a deduction based game. You're going to be uh, trying to, as a, a, as a haunter in this house, make sure that the soccer ball gets trapped in the basement. And if you are the good spirits in the game, you're trying to make sure that the soccer ball reaches the grand entrance. And throughout the game, you're gonna be making choices by giving other players the option to choose a card from you. The player is going to make that choice, and then hopefully it'll be the successful one. You need to get that soccer ball out, and then you need to make sure you get to the grand entrance as the good guys, or you need to make sure that it gets to the basement as the bad guys. There's multiple choices you make, and the choices you make are going to depend on the cards that come out, and those cards are all going to have specific abilities on them that will do certain things either to the soccer ball or showing off the player's identity. Luckily, at the very beginning of the game, you can choose to be on the good spirit side or on the bad spirit side, and uh, that card is going to be face down and hidden from any other players during the game. There's also additional rules as how you play a three, four, and a five player game, because the game is actually three, four, and five players. It takes about mm, 20 minutes at max to play and it's for ages I would say 12 and up with the modified aspect of a mature type theme uh, in a horror based uh, micro card game. Anyway, let's go down below. I'll show you how to play the game and what comes included in the Spirits of Carter Mansion. So here's Spirits of Carter Mansion and everything in the game, which is basically just 18 cards. It's a very small game, but that's the purpose of micro card games. As you can see, there's two types of cards here. Technically, you got the blue and the red cards and the starting cards, which are down here, including the foyer, which is going to be the starting space. Uh, these are corridors here, which are gonna be dependent on the number of players in the game as to whether or not they're going to start in the deck or not. But basically, uh, these are what you're going to get. Now, let's. It's pretty simple as to how the game works. You're going to be needing to get the soccer ball on the field. And if you can have the soccer ball with the uh, grand entrance, you're going to win. However, if the basement hits and the soccer ball is there, then you're going to lose. Um, uh, now, of course, that's the paying if you're the good guys. And it works vice versa if you're playing as the red guys. To start the game off, you're simply going to take the foyer, put it in the middle. You're going to set these other three cards aside and put all of these cards together to form a deck. If you're playing a four player game, you're going to take out the corridors. Uh, and if you are playing a three or a five, you're going to keep them in. In a three player game, you're going to shuffle all of these cards and then you're going to deal out four cards to every single player. And then they're going to get to choose one of those cards uh, that they want to either be on the good side or the bad side, the good spirits or the evil spirits. They'll choose one, they'll set it face down and return the rest. And every player will get a chance to do that. And then after they do that, uh, they're going to then uh, hide these and they're going to keep them in front of them. This is going to be their secret alignment for the entire game. Uh, then you're going to take the rest of the cards and put them back into the deck. Now in a four player game, you're going to just do the same thing, but you're going to take out both of the corridors and you're going to give everybody three cards. And then in a five player game, you will do the same thing, but you're going to put corridors in and deal out three cards. So that is how that goes. Then you're going to also take the grand entrance soccer ball and basement and place it in the deck as well and give it a nice shuffle. After that, every single player is going to get two cards that are separate from their alignment card, and uh, they're going to also uh, have this foyer out. So everybody's got their hand of cards. It's going to be in front of their alignment card. If you have a token or if the game comes with it, you're going to put it on top of these cards here. Then after that, somebody's going to be chosen to go first, and that player could be the youngest player, the oldest player, or the person who read the rules to the game, which is what the book says. They're going to select one of these two cards. Um, uh, to they're it's like one of two cards given to them and they have two cards in their hand so if this is the first player here both of their players other players are going to look at the cards in hand and then give a card to that player to choose to play this player then will select which player they want to uh, take a card from, but it has to be face down, so it's a secret. So you're basing it off of what you, whether you think they're good or bad based on yourself. Uh, so maybe he takes one from this one here. This one is going to go back into the deck. This one will be flipped up, and this card will go down. You're then going to go ahead and shuffle it and deal out uh, one card to each of the players that offered a choice. And then the first player is going to switch to this player, in which case both players will look at their hands once again, select a card for this player to choose. That player will choose one of them, putting that back into the deck along with the cards that weren't chosen and shuffle again. Remember, whenever a card gets played that has an ability like this one here, it says choose a player to swap their alignment card uh, with the active room. So in which case you could go ahead and select uh, this player chose that card so he can select this player if he wants to switch his alignment card with this card here. 
and that is going to uh, give a player the ability to switch alignments. So in which case, uh, this player is now uh, probably on the good side here. Unless it's the active room is the one that's it, it starts off. I'm not exactly sure if that's how it works. But basically, this is the new room now, in which case the next player will get a chance to go after making sure they have their two cards in hand, and the game continues. The way the game ends is when a soccer ball gets chosen from a player's hand, it goes face up on the field like that, and then eventually either the uh, basement or uh, the uh, the grand ent entrance will be played. So if this happens, the game is over and the good spirits win. However, if this is played, uh, then the game is over and the bad spirits win. There's also a couple other different things that can happen throughout the game, but for the most part, that's how you play this quick little deduction-based game in which you're playing uh, on teams in the Spirits of Carter Mansion. And that is how you play the game Spirits of Carter Mansion, a team-based deduction game in which you're trying to get that soccer ball from one place to the other, depending on if you're good or evil. The game has a darker theme, I suppose, so maybe not for younger children because there's basically the soccer ball. I think the idea is that you're, the kids try to chase the soccer ball around the house and then the it's evil spirits trying to get him to the basement and the good guys are trying to get him free and outside of the house and you're kind of having this back and forth. You can change alignments in the game. There's multiple different aspects of it. Sometimes you'll get a quarter that does absolutely nothing. The spirit guide swaps an alignment card with you. Choose a player to swap their alignment card with an active player. Um, the spirit guide, let's see another one. Each player reveals their hand to you and only you. So you get to see what things are going on in the game as you play different cards, giving you different actions when you choose from other players. Now, of course, players can lie to you as to what cards they're playing to you. And obviously you're going to want to lie to a player if you're a bad guy eventually, because once that soccer ball is out, that's when you need the bad the bad entry, the, the basement to, to hit the field. And if you can do that, you win. So lying is beneficial. But sometimes as a bad guy, you might want to be useful and be good just for a period of time uh, until the point of which you're going to be playing that basement card. Or of course, there's some cards that will benefit you as to making other players join your alignment, etc., etc. There could be a point in the game where all players are good or all players are evil, but that's going to switch and depend on the different cards that are being played throughout the game. It's very quick. It's very simple. This is one of those micro card, you know, card, card games in which you're going to get 18 cards to play throughout it. And uh, that's basically the idea. So, I mean, as for what do I think about this game, it's fun. I really enjoyed this game. It's a really quick micro deduction style game. It's a great little gateway game for parties. It is also plays up to five players, but you need to have three. So you're not going to be playing at two players, which realistically is is the only way this game is going to work. I'd like to see it for more players. I'd like to see more cards in this kind of a game because I enjoy uh, these type of trader games and I like building a little bit of more of a meteor game as far as it goes. But overall, it's a fun game. It's a very, very simple. And if you want to play again, you can just go ahead and jump it on and play one more time. No big deal. I was told how to play this game about three or four minutes. And uh, hopefully you have a good idea of how to play as well, just by me explaining the game to you. Uh, the artwork is excellent. I like all the different rooms. You've got the overlook and the lounge, the walk-in wardrobe, the basement. It's basically all the different rooms to a haunted mansion, right? And the theme does come out. You are basically feeling like you're kind of operating where the different locations are going to be placed based on who you trust in this game. It's fun. It's a really cool little game, and if the price point is right, I would definitely suggest you taking a look at this game. If you like trader-based games, if you like a little bit team-based games, and if you like micro card games, this is not one to shy away from because I really think you're going to enjoy it. If you want something with a little bit more meat on it or something that plays a little bit more lengthy, uh, you know, over, over 10, 20 minutes, you're probably going to want to look out what else for, but for those of you who like small type card games that are good for three to five players, as you know, Know most micros are pretty pretty condensed that's how many players you can play most of my player two players so this is one of those different ones that actually plays up to five players which is pretty cool anyway take a look at spirits of carter mansion it's currently on kickstarter and if you're interested in taking a look it's down below in the description it's a fun little game i think you'll like it